T. Shirley, BTS on the road here in Charleston, South Carolina, doing something a lot of comics love to do, and that's a gig near my home. I'll be in Somerville tonight, Somerville, South Carolina, and that's uh, about 30 minutes away. If you remember earlier in this series, BTS on the road, I had to do a show uh, at a place called the Firewater Grill. After doing a show with Tracy Smith here locally, well, that place got burned. <laughs> Firewater grill caught fire. Uh, now the whole place didn't burn down, just a little fire in the kitchen, but the gig was canceled that evening and the club was sold. Now it is called Pugs Tavern and I'm headlining tonight at Pugs Tavern. So we'll be going out there to Somerville, South Carolina, about 30 minutes away. It's real cool. You know, you, you get in your car, you drive, you do a show, get back in the car, go home and you're in your own bed. Anyway, folks, Somerville, South Carolina, actually it's a growing community. 40 years ago, believe it or not, had a population of 3,000. Right now, 44,000. So it's a growing community, it's a cool place. Uh, I love going to this club. First time though there in the new club. And I've heard they made some changes, they've changed the stage around. So we're, you're gonna see it for the first time, I'm gonna see it for the first time in this new club, Pugs Tavern. So Brian T. Shirley, BTS on the road. We might even see Drew Howard tonight, my producer on the BTS radio show. Take care. This is Jason Dyerlon and you're watching BTS on the road. Solitary travels, long lonesome ride. Rain and mountain vistas fill the space she occupied. Cruising two lane heartache for the very last time. Head back, back bent, waiting on the night. Running hard, riding faster, away from nowhere's cold disaster. Future is just empty signs Running hard, running blind Rivers riding shotguns I know, that's so I miss it Oh well, yeah, I wish you could uh, Well, um, I mean Stuff? I don't know, I'm stretched thin. Yeah. I can barely find time to handle Brian. I mean, really, uh, and, and, and that's the main thing. Brian T. Shirley, BTS on the road with my co-host, producer of the BTS radio show, Drew Howard. And here we are again, folks. How you doing, right. Drew? Been since the first BTS on the road, but I'm back. <laughs> he's back, and he's got scotch in his hand. Yeah, it's rum. Oh, rum. Okay. We'll talk about that on stage. <laughs> you were looking for a bottle uh, when we in the first BTS right, on the road in, in that Georgia. house. Nice house down in Georgia. I tell you what, the weather in Somerville broke about as cold as it was that night. Exactly. And that, that was, was January. Yeah, that was brutal. Well, let me ask you this, Drew. So, yeah, I believe it was January. Now we're in November, so we're looking at uh, about 10 months, really, basically. Close to 10 months mm -hmm. since that last show. You've been doing comedy now three years. You're at your three-year spot. What do you think you've learned in 10 months since January, that, fir that first time me and you went on the road? Uh, just a lot more comfortable on stage, just getting more at home up there. Working with the Improbables has really brought out a whole other side to my stand-up and allowing me to be more comfortable in front of a crowd and to uh, play around my comedy, be a little bit more animated. Great. And uh, we're going to get some shots tonight. Hopefully, maybe we'll get you some uh, no, head shots or something. We don't know. But uh, we're here at Pug's Tavern, and this is BTS on the road with Drew Howard. He's going to open, and then I'm going to go up and play with the folks for probably an hour. Who knows? But, Drew, you're going to do a good 20 minutes, you said, tonight. That's what we're shooting for. All righty. Well, good luck, man. Thanks. Drew Howard, co-host and producer of the BTS radio show, and you're watching BTS on the road. Okay. Hello there, how we doing tonight? Put your hands together. Comedy night. Here 
Coach Tavern Bar and Grill. Thanks so much for coming on. My name is Tony Kemp. We've got a great show for you tonight. Your first B&I Travis Comedy Club all over the Southeast. Uh, he's uh, also part of a, an improv group here in Charleston called the Improvables. Everybody to, uh, put their hands together for Drew Barnes. Come on, Drew. Yay! Thank you. Keep it going for Tony Kemp. Yeah. He's still here, you guys. Keep it going for him. We'll get back to Tony Kemp in a little while. Everybody excited tonight? Yeah. Got a few people. Come on, we can do better than that. Everybody excited tonight? Yeah. There we go. I didn't have to say one thing about the tobacco ads, back to the PSA ads. Uh, you see these e-cigarettes everywhere. I see a few people in here that have them and stuff. That's pretty cool. Like, I like them. I'm kind of torn on it, though. Because uh, in the first case, it makes smoking cool again. Like, I, when I was a kid, you had Joe Camel out there. But then um, I have to question, back to the Reading Rainbow thing, I just have to question, is it really a good idea to take the only natural, organic part of the cigarette, the tobacco, out of it, and put more of the chemicals that cause the problems to begin with in there? I'm just saying, you never saw an Indian with a tracheotomy. If an Indian had a hole in his neck, there was an arrow sticking out the other side. Is it just me, or is anybody else getting tired of all these smart devices out there? Anybody else? I'm getting tired of them. You know, you got your smart TVs, your smart phones, your smart cars. They've got smart refrigerators now that tell you when you need to go to the grocery store. Smart toilets that flush themselves. But we're taking it too far. I mean, I love my iPhone, but there's things on there that I don't need. The biggest one being Netflix. Here's the reason why. Who else has spent three and a half hours in a public bathroom taking a crap? Show of hands. Braveheart was on. You don't walk away from that. You, you can't. But uh, we get all these smart devices now, and it seems like we're getting dumber and dumber people using them. Guess everybody loves our smart devices. I don't want to admit their IQ test scores in here tonight. Awesome. <laughs> hey, I'm Tony Kemp, and you're watching BTS On The Road. Every one of our GIs during World War II, did you realize this, Al? Every GI had a can of Spam in his backpack when they went overseas. That's true. So that if they ran out of ammunition, they could throw it at the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> and if they ate it, it would slow them down. Give them worms. <laughs> to be a woman of high moral fiber. <laughs> but I do appreciate your communique and opportunity to be your enormous spirit. Farewell and do. Is it been in New York? I hung up on it. You realize you want to get back together with me two weeks after that? Right. <laughs> You think I got back together with her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, must look hard up to you, <laughs> I did not. I was enjoying myself immensely. Actually, I said, why? I believe that's the most improbable proposition, as I've already written a humorous soliloquy on ominous adventures. <laughs> However, I do invite you out this evening's performance so I can recognize you in front of all those in attendance. Jimmy Crack Corn and I. Now, I will tell you folks this. Every time I do that bit, first of all, I have to give thanks to that man in the back, Tony Kemp. Yes, Tony. Tony. I'll tell you why, because I wrote that bit a while back, going through some tough times. And Tony let me come up here, and y'all remember this. Y'all remember when I was working on that. Let me come up here and house MC for several months in a row. And I got to work on that thing. But now, Tony, every time I do it, I have, my lawyer told me. <laughs> well, he did. Because I've been getting emails from people. I tell them, I say, look, do that. Have fun with that. Use that vernacular in certain situations to screw with people. But now people are doing it stupidly. So I have to tell you, as a PSA, don't do it with the cops. Right? <laughs> I'm sick of that shit. So now I have to explain. He's a fine southern gentleman with the cops. Don't do this. <laughs> Why on hand me, sir? Remove these shackles at once, or I'll be forced to make a report to your spirits. There must be some sort of misunderstanding. I had no idea that that white powdery substance was an illegal intoxicant. 
<laughs> Why, I was made of spelling, said Fowler, as ascertaining its various properties and good and And that fine young lady right there was simply helping me in the identification process. <laughs> so I reimbursed her for her time. <laughs> Naturally. Uh, uh, being a smart lick since she is, she suggested she remove her clothes as they were interfering with her olfactory systems. Her sense of fine southern gentleman I am, I'll remove my clothes as well. Now, as for the chimpanzee. <laughs> That scallywag is a stowaway shirt, sure. I assure you. He's escaped from some sort of traveling circus and is seeking passage back to his homeland. Take him to the nearest infirmary. He is very jittery. <laughs> now, I know we might have some folks out there that might be from the Goose Creek area. I must tell you that I was there not too long ago, well, many moons ago with my father. Many moons ago, my father, I looked at him and I said, Hey, Pappy, is there any way we can get the hell out of here? <laughs> <laughs> and he admonished me for using such colorful language as I was only one year old at the time. <laughs> Actually, I had a little old lady come up to me after the show one night. And she asked me, she said, uh, When you do that fine son character, have you ever seen him in another situation? Like a porno? <laughs> well, I have now, man. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> Find Southern Gentleman in a porno. <laughs> <laughs> Why, General Beauregard, I believe your manhood is pressed against my petticoat. <laughs> I should drop my umbrella. And when I be known to retrieve it, it will allow easy access to penetration. <laughs> well, that's a good idea, then, Miss Lily. I shall take this opportunity to procure my plastic sheet. <laughs> <laughs> so I can avoid any unnecessary gestation activities. <laughs> I'm gonna put on a condom. <laughs> But, uh, I gotta tell you, buddy, that, that football parents, I was going to your show today, and you know what, you know what they said? They said, surely you are. <laughs> Hey folks, Brian T. Shirley, BTS on the road here in Charleston, South Carolina, right down from my little apartment. Uh, it was a great show last night, fantastic show at Pug's Tavern, and as you can see, beautiful day today. A little chilly, but not as bad as yesterday. You saw what it was like. We had a fair in town. We had the big fair here. We had the, uh, the Gamecocks playing bad weather but still had some folks turn out for an incredible show last night my buddy my co-host my producer of the bts radio show drew howard did a great job and you got to see tony kemp open up the show and do a shout out for bts on the road tony kemp 30 years in the business of doing comedy booking comedy here in the low country he's worked with Jerry Seinfeld, Jay Leno, just about any of the top comedians you can think of back in the day came here to Charleston, South Carolina to work Tony Kemp's rooms. I was fortunate enough 20 years ago to start with Tony and I worked with guys, hung out with guys like Brian Regan, Bobby Collins, Carrot Top. And my good buddy now, Daryl Rhodes, I met right here in Charleston, South Carolina many years ago working the room for Tony Kemp. But this episode of BTS on the Road, you didn't just get to meet Tony Kemp. You saw the little one-nighter there in Somerville, Pug's Tavern. They really did a great job with uh, re-doing uh, that room there for comedy. Great little stage area. And uh, I'll be working for Tony in the future. I've been working for him for over 20 years. Started at the workshop in uh, many years ago in North Charleston at the Comedy Zone when he ran the Comedy Zone. And let me tell you folks, it was Wednesday through Sunday, sometimes Tuesday through Sunday, just depending on the week and how the club was doing, but it was a full-time gig. So this is Brian T. Shirley, BTS on the road. Next 
Savannah, Georgia. We are going to go behind the scenes. BTS on the road will be there for the Savannah Comedy Review Comedy Competition. I talked to the folks from South Magazine. They're going to come and be celebrity judges. I also got Mike Aloya and Batman from Jax coming to be celebrity judges. And Mike Aloya, myself, and Thomas Paris, we're going to shoot this year, and it's going to be on American Hearts Radio 24-7 Web TV Network. So this is going to be big, folks. Next week, BTS on the road. We're going to go behind the scenes of the shooting of the Savannah Comedy Review Comedy Competition. So next week, BTS on the road, Savannah, Georgia. This is Brian T. Shirley saying thanks for all you folks out there that watch this series. Uh, Al and Barbara who came out last night to Pugs, uh, Jackie Ford out there in Nevada, and all the other folks that have said that they like the series. I really appreciate all the support you folks give me in doing this, and I love doing it, and I will continue. Brian T. Shirley, see you next time. All right, so my name is Jason Dyer. I'm from my positive perspective. You may recognize me as being on previously several BTS on the road appearances I've done. I'm here to make another one. Showing support for my friend Brian Shirley. BTS on the road and uh, take two. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said the grass was greener on the other side and the sky looks so much bluer. In his youthful eyes So he started pushing buttons Just to make me lose my mind Driving my life from the passenger side He told me to drink, darling, thanks for the ride this old corner bar is just so comfortable inside And no one that I meet feels the need to criticize You drove me to drink You drove me to the brink You drove me to drink Thanks 